Chapter 1, Introduction This book is a brief introduction to philosophy for people who don't know the first thing about the subject. People ordinarily study philosophy only when they go to college, and I suppose that most readers will be of college age or older. But that has nothing to do with the nature of the subject, and I would be very glad if the book were also of interest to intelligent high school students with a taste of aspect ideas and theoretical arguments, should any of them read them. Our analytical capacities are often highly developed before we have learned a great deal about the world, and around the age of 14, many people start to think about philosoph philosophical problems on their own, about what really exists, whether we can know anything, whether anything is really right or wrong, whether life has any meaning, whether death is the end. These problems have been written about four thousands of years, but the philosophical raw material comes directly from the world in our relation to it, not from writings of the past. That is why they come up again and again in the heads of people who haven't read about them. This is a direct introduction to nine philosophical problems each of which can be understood in itself without reference to the history of thought. I shall not discuss the great philosophical writings of the past or the cultural background of those writings. The center of philosophy lies in certain questions which the reflective human minds find naturally puzzling, and the best way to begin the study of philosophy is to think about them directly. Once you've done that, you are in a better position to appreciate the work of others who have tried to solve the same problems. Philosophy is different from science and from mathematics. Unlike science, it doesn't rely on experiment, experiment and observations, but only on thought. And unlike mathematics, it has no formal methods of proof. It is done just by asking questions, arguing, trying out ideas, and thinking of possible arguments against them, and wondering how our concepts really work. The main concern of philosophy is to question and understand very common ideas that all of us use every day without thinking about them. A historian may ask, what happened at some time in the past? But a philosopher will ask, what is time? A, math a mathematician may investigate the relations among numbers, but a philosopher will ask, what is a number? A physicist will ask, what atoms are made, or what explains gravity? But a philosopher will ask, how we can know there is anything outside of our own minds? A psychologist may investigate how children learn a language, but a philosopher will ask, what makes a word mean anything? Anyone can ask whether it's wrong to sneak into a movie without paying, but a philosopher will ask, what makes an action right or wrong? We couldn't get along in life without taking the ideas of time, number, knowledge, language, right and wrong, for granted most of the time. But in philosophy, we investigate those things themselves. The aim is to push our understanding of the world and ourselves a bit deeper. Obviously, it isn't easy. The more basic in the ideas you try, you are trying to investigate, the fewer tools you have to work with. There isn't much you can assume or take for granted. So philosophy is somewhat dizzying activity, and few of its results go unchallenged for long. Since I believe the best way to learn about philosophy is to think, about particular questions. I won't try to say more about its general nature. The nine problems we'll consider are these. Knowledge of the world beyond our minds. Knowledge of minds other than our own. The relations between mind and brain. How language is possible. Whether we have free will. The basis of morality. What inequalities are in unjust. The nature of death. The meaning of life. They are only a selection. There are many, many others. 
what I say will reflect my own view of these problems and will not necessarily re represent represent what most philosophers think. There probably isn't any that most philosophers think about these questions anyway. Philosophers disagree, and there are more than two sides to every philosophical question. My personal opinion is that most of these problems have not been solved, and that perhaps some of them never will be. But the object here is not to give answers, not even answers that myself may think are right, but to introduce you to the problems in a very prim preliminary way, so that you can worry about them yourself. Before learning a lot of philosophical theories, it is better to get puzzled about the philosophical questions which those theories try to answer. And the best way to do that is to look at some possible solutions and see what is wrong with them. I'll try to leave the problems open, but even if I say what I think, you have no reason to believe it unless you find it convincing. There are many excellent introductory texts that include selections from the great philosoph philosophers of the past and from more recent writings. This short book is not a substitute for that approach, but I hope it provides a first book at the subject that is as clear and direct as possible. If after reading it you decide to take a second look, you'll see how much more there is to say about these problems that I say here.